What is up, everybody? We're going to go into part two of sourcing off-market deal flow if you're looking to swim upstream into larger commercial deals. In the previous training, we had covered uh, how, uh, why deal sourcing is substantially different in the commercial space as it is in residential. Um, I told the story before. You know, I thought that I could directly apply what I learned in residential deal sourcing and direct mail specifically to sourcing commercial deals, I ended up setting $20,000 on fire. It just didn't work. I didn't get a single deal out of it, right? I just ended up getting a bunch of, uh, you know, FUs and uh, tire kicking time wasters. Um, so this is the tactical type of stuff that I've applied. Um, so primary, primary off-market deal source number two is, drum roll please, other real estate investors. That might lead uh, lead you scratching your head in terms of like, well, that's my competition. Why would I ever get a uh, off market commercial deal from another real estate investor? All right, the reason why is because a lot of other active real estate investors in your market, they don't feel like they're ready to go big. All right, a lot of those ones that are active out there, maybe doing two, three, four, five deals a month. They may cr come across a larger commercial property. In fact, they probably do, and. Uh, they're going to be like, hey, I don't have the capital to do this. I don't have the hard money lenders to have the capacity to do these types of deals, so on and so forth. So this is a great source because of that. And in fact, the Monroe Megs deal that I did was actually a referral to me. Uh, I didn't have to pay anything for it. It was just basically, hey, Matt, here you like, here you go. Here it is on a silver platter. And that deal alone added about $600,000 to my net worth and about $70,000 a year in cash flow, right? That one deal basically replaces somebody's income, right? So there was a lot of things that I did unknowingly in that process to position myself for that opportunity. So I was able to kind of like look back on what specifically I was doing and develop a tactical strategy going forward so that we have a healthy amount of deal flow from the primary deal channels. Um, and that's what I'm going to share with you today, all right? So why real estate investors for off-market deal flow, all right? First reason, don't feel ready to go big. Second reason is there are hundreds to thousands of active real estate investors in your MSA or metropolitan st statistical area or town, city, whatever, right? And uh, these people are out there grinding. A lot of them, you know, probably the top 20% are out there grinding, actively growing their business in small, you know, single family to small multifamily. So positioning yourself as the go-to person for, off-market commercial deals, or even on-market. I mean, there's this whole thing in terms of, you know, off-market deals being the holy grail uh, for real estate investors. We've done off-market deals. We've been on, we've been done on-market deals that have been, you know, on the market for two years and everybody looked at it. And uh, some of those were the best deals we ever did in our entire life. But we're going to talk about off-market in this trainer, right? So how would do I position myself to get deal flow from other investors? All right. I have a few different rules here through a few different type, type of tactical things. Number one, be specific on what you're looking for and being very vocal about that. Specificity helps. It helps anchor a person's mind to something that they can actually visualize. If you tell other real estate investors that you network with at real estate meetups and so you know so on and so forth that you're just looking for commercial deals that make sense, uh, you're looking for ten plus unit multifamily and you know the sky is the limit. Um, that's going to be very very difficult to define and and uh, establish an anchor in somebody's mind. We're using active brain chemistry here for this uh, type of uh, this type of tactic, right? So if you can communicate to them, I'm looking for something that is you know ten to thirty units in the uh, suburb of Pittsburgh, New York, that was built within the last 50 years, that's brick-sided, pitched roof, and uh, is in a great, you know, is in a great location and, uh, you know, is not distressed. You know, you can develop all this criteria there. So just think about like what your dream property is and how you can recognize this is like driving around town and uh, actually taking pictures. You can actually come up with addresses of properties that you would like to own. So people can see that. And when they, and when other investors actually see that out in the marketplace, then they can, you know, they can say, all right, that's a Matt Druin deal. All right. So that's the reason behind that. Now, some people might be like, well, if I get too specific, then if there's something that doesn't fit within that small box, then 
I'm not going to be thought of, right? That's not the case. When you develop that specific criteria that establishes the anchor, so you'll find that other opportunities that are outside the box will come to you because you've developed this very, very specific anchor. It's not vacuous. It's not, I'm looking for any commercial deal that makes sense, whether it's multifamily, self-storage, you know, commercial office, you know, mixed use, retail, whatever. All right. So that's the one thing, right? Being specific on there, developing that criteria, developing like that, you know, what your dream properties look like. Number two, going actively to meetups with other real estate investors. If you do have a if you do have a small sphere of influence and you only know maybe a couple of real estate investors in your market or none, start going act, you know, actively to real estate meetups. There's probably more than a few that are in your town. Get to know those people, getting belly to belly with them, shoulder to shoulder helps establish that relationship. And when you're trying to, you know, communicate to them, you know, how you can add, you know, how, you know, they can add value to you and how you can add value to them, then uh, that is a great way to start the relationship building process. All right. This also develops a circular reference and a circular reference by meaning that these people, because you are one of the few real estate investors that are looking for commercial deals they start to network with other investors and uh, your name gets around there. And, uh, you know, the more people know you and what I mean by circular reference is this is a little bit, you know, difficult to, uh, explain just by the term that I just made up. Right. So if you are looking, you know, to, uh, to do business with somebody new, right? Like whether it's your, you know, buying a car from some, uh, from some place or hiring a realtor to sell your house, you're oftentimes going to ask a friend or family member or somebody in your sphere, you know, do you know this person, right? And uh, an incredible amount of social proof is when that other person can say, "Oh yeah, I know them. They're, you know, they're a good egg. They're hard work. They're hardworking. They're an expert in their field. All that stuff uh, builds that social proof, so that when other investors are talking to each other. Hey, I got this de this off market deal. I don't think I can take it down. Uh, ben, do you you know are you interested? You know they're probably going to say no. But Matt Druin is buying deals exactly like this, or maybe a little bit you know different than this. But they may be a great source to uh, to bring this to. There's also going to be wholesalers that are at these meetups as well. Wholesalers, even though most of them are focused on single family through small multifamily. These people are hustlers. You know the ten, the top ten percent of wholesalers, active wholesalers in the mark in your market that are actively marketing, cold calling, direct mail. You want to get to know these people. These people earn what's called an assignment fee, uh, which is essentially a commission for finding a off market property that they can then sell that contract to another investor. All right, it's got built in equity, typically, ideally. So. And they're typically getting an assignment fee of maybe between five to fifteen thousand dollars, depending, right? So when you're talking to wholesalers, hey, I'm not, you know, actually interested in buying single through small multifamily, but how would you like to be able to earn like thirty, sixty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars by finding a deal that meets my criteria? Um that's definitely motivating, right? Because they're like, well, I'd have to do 10 of those deal, you know, smaller deals via wholesale to do that. Um, so the most powerful thing that I can come up with when I'm networking with a wholesaler is I can say, you know, these are a list of properties that I've driven by that I would love to own. You know, if you can get in contact with the owner, help me make contact and I can close that deal, I'm more than happy to pay you a referral fee of whatever. 3% of the sale price or a flat fee, like $25,000. You can kind of take like, all right, if typically, you know, 10 unit plus properties or whatever commercial property asset class you're looking for, you know, sell between a million to $3 million, you know, you can come up with a, you know, you can come up with a, a healthy assignment fee or finder's fee out of that. So you can convert wholesalers to bird dogs for you that are actively out there, their core business is not going to change, but you know, they're going to be actively out there uh, looking at opportunities. And uh, that's their sole thing is that they are marketing companies, essentially. They're not real estate companies. Wholesalers are marketing companies. So thirdly, social media strategy. 
Um, I put on a previous trainer on the 15 commandments of social media in your business. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check it out. Rewatch it. Um, it's completely free. Uh, and it's essentially all the tactics I use in terms of utilizing the asset of social media to grow my business. Um, the content strategy. If you're an experienced real estate investor that's been doing single family through small multifamily deals, you need to start changing this identity with your social media presence, right? So you might be doing, you know, fix and flips and, you know, uh, you know, buy and hold smaller multifamily deals. You want to start putting content out there in regard to commercial to add value to your audience or the people you're connected to, but also to start to change the identity that they have of you in their mind of an active commercial real estate investor. What this does is that this is, and this is what I call a social augmentation strategy is that you take these one-on-one -on -one meetings that you, you know, maybe have one-off conversation at a real estate meetup and, uh, or a one-off coffee meeting or lunch and that sort of thing. You're connected to this person on social media. And then by virtue of them getting your content over time and consistently, this keeps you top of mind as the subject matter expert and the go-to person for commercial real estate deals in their market or in their sphere of influence, which you will be one of the only few. And the way that you keep top of mind is through basically, you know, having a consistent uh, content strategy through adding value, all right? Not constantly posting, hey, I'm looking for a commercial real estate deal. Hey, I'm looking for a commercial real estate deal. Um, but actual educational type of stuff that you can employ in terms of, hey, this is how commercial is different than residential. Uh, you know, commercial, you, I mean, residential, you're used to 30 year fixed year, uh, fixed rate loans. Uh, with commercial real estate, you know, it's generally totally different than that. It's all negotiable in terms of real estate financing. This is just a small example. But what you can do to kind of get content ideas is to go on YouTube, go on Instagram, go on Facebook, follow these other commercial uh, investors and see what works for them. All right. And then just copy and steal everything. All right. You can just take their idea, put your own voice on it and uh, reuse that. This is, you know, this is why I follow so many real estate investors, not only commercial ones, but residential ones as well to develop my own, you know, my own content that I put out there. Um, so this is incredibly helpful because you're only going to have a chance to meet somebody face to face, maybe a couple times a year. But if you're consistently posting content, let's say three times a week, then uh, that you know once or twice every uh, every year that you get together with them or see them at a meetup, they're constantly getting indoctrinated with your content over that period, so that the next time you meet them, your your relationship with them is gets highly leveraged. All right, um, so that's very very powerful. The second content strategy, and this is the reason why I love Facebook and also LinkedIn as well, is that Facebook and uh, LinkedIn have uh, focused groups, right? If you heard of Facebook groups, you probably belong to a couple of them already. Try to not try, but join the all of the real estate investing related Facebook groups that are in your marketplace. All right. And you know, these are active ones. I don't care how big or how small they are, but join every one that covers your kind of like geographic area that you're looking to acquire property in. And when you join these groups, you're going to be able to click on member, uh, the members of that group. And I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to share my screen here and show you exactly what this looks like. All right. So let me just share my screen. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So now we're going to go to Facebook. You can do the same thing on LinkedIn as well. And we're going to go to, let's see. All right. So this is one that I'm belonging at. I'm president of this local real estate investors association. So then what you're going to do is you're going to click on members. All right. I want to make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. So you're getting, getting the information. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to click on members. And then when you scroll down, you're going to see... All right, you're gonna see friends that you're already friends with in there, so don't worry about that list. And then members with things in common, all right? So I'd like to start there, I'd like to go down. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a reminder on your calendar to add 20 new friends a day in a, a Facebook group so that you can actually 
you know, go on, click the, you know, click add friends and that sort of thing. You know, sometimes you'll be like, you know, be able to sort of, you know, um, uh, eliminate some, you know, some people based upon, okay, this person is definitely like, you know, they're somebody that's not an active real estate investor or whatever, but you don't have to be st stingy about your friend requests. So you had 20 new friends a day. The reason why you don't exceed 20 is because the Facebook, uh, uh, community guidelines will red flag your account or put you in Facebook jail. If you add more than 20 to 30 a day in, um, in any given, uh, real, uh, Facebook group. All right. So you can do this while you're sipping your morning coffee, so to speak. All right. So you go down through there, half of those 20 will, uh, most likely accept your friend request. All right. When they accept your friend request, after you're doing this 20, adding 20 new friends a day, look and see who accepted your friend request, and then just send them a, a message. Hey, I'm happy to connect. I'm active in, in uh, you know, I'm happy to connect Jeffrey Price. I'm active in commercial and multi uh, larger multifamily deals in Rochester, New York, um, and uh, uh, just always looking to expand my network. Um, you know, I'm actively looking for, uh, you know, commercial real estate deals, remember that fits this criteria. Um, what are you focused on, All right? What this does is that this is uh, hype, you know, uh, hyper charges engagement, and uh, when they respond to your DM that you send on, on through Facebook, then they're actually going to see a lot more of your content. And if it's engaging, then they'll engage with it, and they'll see more, and they'll see more of it. And this is kind of how you end up building your network using the social augmentation strategy. This may be somebody you have never met before face to face. Where the magic really happens is when you they've been engaging with their content for three to six months, and then you see them physically, you know, face to face at a meetup. Right? They're gonna feel like they already know you. Right? Hey, how's it going, Matt? You know, I see that you're crushing in commercial real estate, or I love the content you're putting out there, and that sort of thing. This is kind of confirmation for how the magic sort of works on this whole thing, um, and it has worked tremendously well in my business in terms of, um, uh, deal flow. All right. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this training next week or next training is going to be the third primary source of, uh, off market deal flow through commercial is direct to seller. And I'll go over a couple of tactical types of things that I do in terms of prospecting for off market deals, direct to seller. Remember in the first, uh, leg of this whole, you know, whole three part training, direct to seller has the longest life cycle. This is not a you know quick speed to lead or anything like that. It's definitely relationship based when you're making contact with a uh, uh, owner of a commercial real estate property that you want to buy. So don't expect that it's going to work faster than sourcing off market deals from real estate brokers, commercial real estate brokers, or other investors. This is the slowest of the three. So you have to be patient. And I have a lot of students in my program that don't even bother with this channel. All right. I have students that they really lean into this because they're, you know, they love prospecting. They love cold, they love cold calling and building new relationships, but they have the expectation that it's, you know, might take months, if not years for those contacts to actually turn into a contract. All right. So hope you got value out of this. And if you do have any questions, just let me know. And uh, furthermore, if you are, you know, wanting to take this conversation further, and you're an experienced real estate investor, and you want to uh, um, position, start positioning yourself into how to um, buy larger deals with none of your own money. You know, be less busy. You know, running on a hamster wheel, buying deals that pay you incremental chump change. Reach out to me. Love to talk to you. See what your goals are, and see how I might be able to help. So, um, I have my uh, link to my calendar uh, in uh, the. Um, uh, in the uh, YouTube video that's here at the bottom, you can pick out a date that works best for you. And I'll be happy to see uh, how I can add value or help you achieve your real estate objectives over the long term. So uh, that being said, cheers, have a great day. We'll talk soon.